Hello, I am Victor Paredes, I am the product manager of Moho and I want to show you how to use the new dynamics in Moho 14. So to do, to do that I will show you just this character. This is a very simple character. Uh, it's just a PSD file and it is rigged in a very quick way so nothing is really bending uh, in, a, in a fancy way. But it will be enough for us to work with the, with the dynamics. So what I'm going to do is to create some animation first because the dynamics is a property you apply to the bones and that property makes the bones to follow the movement of another bone okay so it will uh, it will be animated by the other bone so let me just show you here so let's just shake the angle of this character so i will just go to frame 12 uh, use the transform bone tool and i will rotate this to the left and then to the right and then to the left again and to the right and then it will ba go back to normal okay so i have this animation happening okay that's it nothing too fancy again and i will set the end of the animation uh, of the preview to be on frame 78 so to do that i will press ctrl and right click so that way i can mark in here the uh, the out uh, position of my animation so when I hit play here I will only preview this range of frames so my animation my entire animation is still longer but I am previewing only this section okay and if you want to cut the section uh, at the left so if you want to set a beginning you can hold ctrl and click over this so now the the green marker marks the beginning and the red marker marks the end and if you want to remove any of these markers, you just hold Ctrl and click over them and you remove them. So now you will see the entire animation here. Which is nothing, the character is not doing anything. But anyway, let me just mark this on 78 again. And now what I'm going to do is I will select the head bone with the select bone tool. I will just select this one and I will hit play. All right, and now I will open the bone constraints here. So I have the character playing. And now here you have the bone dynamics options. All right, and we have new dynamics for angle, position, and scale. And here you have some values for it. So let's uh, let's apply the angle dynamics here. So in, if I apply the dynamics in the middle of the animation, it's going to look crazy. But as soon as the, as the software plays the animation from the beginning again, is going to be calculated again so now you can see that the the head is reacting to the movement of the of the body all right and here we have several values uh, first we have a new value which is the weight of the bone okay so in the past each bone has its own weight and it was defined by the size of the bone um, but you you couldn't modify that all right now we we can mo modify this so it is still defined by the size of the bone but now i can make it lighter or heavier so when i do that uh the lighter the bone is the easier will be for the for the software to move it so you can see if it is lighter it will move a bit more or it will be easier for the cara for the for the bone to react and if it is heavier the reaction is going to be a bit heavier it will happen a bit later you can see the reaction is is diff different there so you can define the white the weight here uh, so let's say i like this weight okay and now we are going to start with these other values so we have torsion here and the torsion defines how big the movement is going to be so in this case how many degrees the bone is going to rotate so the bigger this value is the more this bone is going to rotate so the wider the the movement is going to be see and the smaller this value is i'm just dragging the mouse here over it so the smaller it is the less it is going to rotate all right so let me just rotate it a bit more so that distortion now we have a spring and the spring value uh means how um, strong the is the force that the bone is going to apply to go back to its normal angle or its normal position, its normal angle in this case. So the bigger the spring is, 
the more force the bone is going to apply to go back to normal. So you can see it bounces a lot because it, it bounce, bounces to go back to its normal position. So you can see the movement is more rigid if I apply more spring. And if I apply less spring, the movement is going to be softer because the bone is not applying too much force to go back to its, uh, its original angle. So let's set the, the spring to 2 or maybe a bit more. Okay, 2.5, alright? And now finally, the damping. Um, the bigger the damping is, the sooner this bone is going to stop moving. So you can see here, the, the movement of the character stops around second 2, right? But the, this bone continues moving way later until second three and even after uh, second three and I, if i increase the damping now the bone is going to stop sooner so the bigger the damping is the sooner the bone is going to stop all right so then you can combine and this will depend of the of your character and the material you you want to give the sensation it has so <clears throat> i have seen some tutorials that telling you that you need to apply some very specific numbers here to make it work and I think I, I, I honestly I disagree with those tutorials um, I think this is more about a trial and error of, your, of the character itself because it will really depend on how that character moves and what kind of material you want to give the sensation it has so if you hit play and you modify these values in real time it's very easy to get the sensation you want so maybe this is what I want with this one all right, so this is for angle. Uh, now I will disable the angle here. I, I don't have any more dynamics and I will close this. All right, and I will select these keyframes and I will remove them. I'm just removing the animation because what I want to do now is instead of rotating the character, I want to shake it by moving the main bone. Okay, so I'm just going to shake it a bit and maybe we'll define the end of the animation a bit later. So now the character is doing this. Maybe it is too slow, so I will select the keyframes, hold Alt on the keyboard, and I I will drag the last keyframe to scale everything. So maybe here. Okay, this is better. So I will just leave it like that. All right. So now I will select the head again. Hit play. I'm just using a spacebar to hit play. And now I will go back to the bone constraints. And now I will select the position constraints. So with the position constraints, the, the bone is going to move it. To, it's going to change its position reacting to the, to the body. Now in this case, this bone is too heavy. This bone is uh, 8.5, uh, has 8.5 of weight. So I will reduce the weight. And probably we are going to see it better if it is less heavy so maybe like that so you can see it is moving a little bit when it is lighter and now once it is lighter I can go to the torsion and I can increase the movement there so the bigger this value is the more it is going to move okay and I can also change the spring so if I want it to go back to the position quicker and I can reduce the damping if I want to. I want it to continue um, bouncing after the movement ended. So maybe more torsion here. Okay. So let's suppose I like this. Okay. It's not moving too much, but it's giving some sensation there. All right. And maybe a bit more of a damping. So you can see there is a lot of trial and error here, just playing with these numbers. If you add crazy numbers here, if you if you have like zero spring or zero spring or uh, I don't know one hundred torsion or whatever, probably your character is, is going to explode or is going to start doing weird stuff. But that is basically because you are defining numbers that are too big or too crazy or or the difference between each number is too heavy. Okay, and now I can act activate the angle also, so I can have both the angle and the position working together. So let me just increase the angle here so now you can see the character is not only moving the position of the head, it's also rotating it. So maybe it will increase. 
and the rotation has its own weight too so I can define more or less weight for the rotation so let's say uh, maybe less damping even for the rotation you see here the weight is too light so now the, the bone is going crazy so I will increase the weight to make it work so the bone is actually not going crazy it is doing what you are telling it to do <laughs> which is like rotate a lot because it's it is extremely light all right now uh, let me show you something else here I will select now the two bones of the body these two bones here all right and I will hit play again and now I will apply the bone constraints for these two bones but the scale constraints so I will wait until the animation goes back so here is here is the scale working so again I can change the torque which means uh, the bigger this the more it is going to scale you can see it here I can change the spring so the less spring it has the softer the movement is going to do to be I will just increase it now that maybe yeah something like that uh, the weight you can change that so now it will bounce more because the 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 bones are lighter and then the damping if I wanted to stop sooner or later so I want to keep some movement happening here okay so now we have the scale working there and we can also apply a squash and a stretch because right now the bones are just stretching so if I click here I can apply some squash and stretch and you can see the body is squashing also so this um, this value has a percentage here so I can reduce it if I want to scale it more or, or scale it less you can see it has some squash and stretch but now it's a bit more subtle so even less maybe this so you can see it's scaling less uh, if I increase this value you can see I can do something totally crazy here so it will scale a lot you see so let's just keep it at I don't know like 50% or even less 45 okay I like that and I can combine this with the angle constraint too so now it is scaling and rotating okay and I can change these values if I want so maybe I want more spring maybe I want the um, the bones to be lighter or maybe a bit heavier in this case yeah let, let's say I'm happy with this okay and now <coughs> we are going to add uh, rotation and uh, rotation uh, constraints for the for the arms legs and the tail so I will just select all these bones here I'm just holding shift and clicking on all the bones I want to select and uh, now we will hit play and I will apply angle constraints angle uh, dynamics so you can see the angle working here now so maybe it is too much so I will just give it some spring or maybe actually less spring but less torsion too so it will be a bit softer and maybe less weight so it will move more but in a, still in a softer way maybe less damping so here I have the character uh, maybe a bit more of damping and maybe a bit more of rotation there and less spring yeah now it's moving a lot <laughs> but there there you have it so you can change that and now what I'm going to do also is I will select only the main bones of the of the legs and the and the arms and I will add a position constraint for them sorry a position dynamics so maybe the position is going to change more uh, even more so now you can see the position is also changing for these bones so yeah we have this animation and we just moved one bone but everything else is reacting with that and if you want to continue doing stuff you can select the the eyes for instance the pupils here and I can set uh, position constraints for the eyes so now they are going to move maybe the eyes are going to be a bit lighter so they are going to move more 
maybe more torsion too and less spring there you have the eyes moving also and less damping well there you have it this is not really working for the eyes but if you have a mask it will look better if the pupils are masked inside actually let's create the mask so this is going to look better so i will just select one of the eyes and here is the black part of the sorry the white part of the eye and here is the pupil here is the group so i will set a group mask inside of the bottom layer so now the pupil is going to be masked inside of the of the eye and i will do the same for the other eye so group mask group inside so now uh, yeah now the pupils are not going up not, are not going out anymore okay but this is basically it uh, you can play a lot with this and apply different values to different bones uh, you can just hit play uh, to see everything happening in real time again if you change or apply uh, something in the middle of the animation please hit play and then wait until the animation starts again because that that is the way the software will calculate the dynamics properly all right so if you do something in the middle pro probably something crazy will happen but as soon as the animation restart it is going to look better now i want to show you another example here and actually for this example i want to show you without the dynamics activated first so i will go to animation and click here on enable bone dynamics i will just disable that so now if i hit play you can see this is a dinosaur walking all right and doing some stuff like that so nothing too weird is happening here only the legs and the main body are moving all right but now uh if i go to bone and i show all bones because i have some hidden bones here you can see there are many bones actually for this dinosaur okay and all those bones they have dynamics so now if i go to animation and enable the dynamics again now i can hit play and you can see how all the bones are actually reacting to that so I only animated the legs and the main part of the body, but all the rest is just reacting there with dynamics. So for instance, I can select, <coughs> I can select this bone and I can increase, in this case it has position dynamics, so maybe I can increase the position and you can see how it is moving more now. And maybe I can apply an angle constraint too. So now the angle is changing, so maybe it is too much maybe more torsion too I will just change that so yeah so you can change these values in real time now I can select I know, this bone here and this has angle constraints so I can increase the angle so it will move more there too or I can apply a position constraint so now it is also moving or changing the position reacting to the main movement so you can see all this happening in real time and you can just modify that and it, it's actually once you get the values it is very easy to get what you want <clears throat> now a final example I want to show you and is that you can combine uh, bone constraints and dynamics so what is happening here is that I have one character here and this I make is actually one bone and you can see this bone only has position uh, keyframes translation keyframes so this is only the only thing that is being animated here is the position of, of this bone and everything else is un animated automatically all right now let me show you how this is done so first uh, we have the main bone that controls this character and it has the position animated but also if I select this bone the angle and the position of this bone itself is uh, also has dynamics so when you move this bone the bone will react to to its own animation so you will have a softer animation there and some bounciness uh, and 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 the angle is also going to react to that movement i can even change the scale too i can apply a scale and maybe a squash and a stretch scale so now the character is also scaling so maybe let me just increase that so there you, you can see the character is scaling now so basically this bone is reacting to itself let me just remove the scale for now 
And now the interesting part are the flies, okay? So if you see here, each fly has actually two bones. It has the main bone of the fly and then it has a second bone here, okay? If I look at the main bone of the fly, which is this one, uh, this bone is actually following the main bone here of the character. So if you see, the, if I select the bone of the character, it is called main, okay? And if I select this bone of the fly, I can go to the bone constraints and you can see that this bone is following the bone that has the name main. It's following its, its position at 100% for X and Y. That means horizontally and vertically. It's, for, it's following its movement in the, in the same way. But it is following 22 frames later. So every time the character moves, this bone is also going to move, but 22 frames later, almost one second later, okay? So you can see here, actually, let me deactivate the dynamics so you can see it better. So you can see when this character moves to the left, this bone is going to move to the left, but later than that. And then the character moved to the right, so this bone is going to move to the right, but later, okay? Now, this is what is happening with this bone, but now this bone, which is actually the, the bone the fly is bound to, this bone is child of this one, but it has position dynamics. So that means that when this bone moves, this one is going to react the with the position of that. So now if I enable the dynamics, I will select these two bones so you can see it. You can see that this bone goes, but the second bone takes a while to arrive because it is using position dynamics so you get like this bounciness of going and 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 maybe uh, arriving later or maybe taking more distance or maybe reacting to a faster movement so you have dynamics there so basically we are combining here the the position constraints with a delay plus the dynamics so if i select different bones here you can see for instance this bone it's also following the, ma the main character, but three frames later. So this fly is going to arrive sooner. This one is nine frames later. This one is eight, six, four, um, nine, and 12. So each fly is arriving a, a little bit later than the other. So it gives the sensation that they really are following and reacting to the movement. So the, this, this is the last one that is uh, following 22 frames later. So you can see it feels, um, it is just arriving later. But anyway, you have this entire animation just using the constraints with the delay uh, frames plus dynamics. So if for some reason you want to animate a character that is uh, um, surrounded by flies and wants to escape, you can use this technique. Okay. Well, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.